Hey kindergarten and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to be making apple chips and the first thing we need to do is read the recipe. So here it is. First we'll look at our ingredients. We need two apples and one teaspoon of cinnamon. That's pretty easy. Our tools are an oven, a baking sheet, a knife, and a cutting board. And for kids, you need an adult. We'll read through our whole recipe and then we will start to get everything together so we're ready to go. First, we need to preheat the oven to 225 degrees. We will wash and dry the apples, slice the apples as thin as we can, place the apples on a baking sheet in a single layer and make sure they're not touching, and sprinkle cinnamon over them. Then we will bake them for one hour, turn them over, and we'll have to be really careful because they will be hot, and we'll bake for one more hour. And then we'll let them cool and we can eat them or we can store them in a container for two or three days. Let's go ahead and get everything we need together in order to have this recipe going. All right, so our recipe says that all you need are two apples and some cinnamon. Now I picked an apple here that has a little bit of a spot on it and that is okay. We're gonna cook these so it's not as important as if we were just eating them regular. This is all the recipe asks for. If we want, we could add some other things like maybe you like nutmeg or even some pumpkin pie spice, or you could put a little bit of lemon juice on them. I'm gonna do it just the way the recipe says and just use cinnamon and apples. It's pretty simple. Now I'm gonna go ahead and wash and dry these apples just like the recipe said, and then we will preheat the oven. Alrighty, here are our apple. Just wash them, I'm gonna dry them off. I have our recipe here so that we can reference it and look back on it and make sure that we know all the things we need to do. So first we need to wash and dry the apples and also preheat the oven. Let's go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna slice the apples as thin as we can. So for this part, you will need an adult to use that knife for you. Kids aren't gonna use these sharp sharp knives. Here is my oven. I'm gonna press bake. And we need two, two, five, and then start. And it will go ahead and start to heat up the oven. I'm also gonna turn on our oven light. All right, you may hear some oven sounds in the background because of course they are starting to heat up. Here is a bowl where I'm gonna put our slices as soon as we are done with them. Go ahead and take the cutting board down. I'll start with this apple. Now I'm using a big knife, but I'm a grown up, so it's okay for me to use this. You need to ask for help from an adult. When I slice these, I'm gonna slice from the side, not from the top. You can really do it either way, but I think it looks prettier if you slice from the side. So here goes. I'm gonna make them as thin as I can. The first one always seems to be the hardest but they'll make little, little shapes like that, little rings. Alrighty. Oh, here's kind of cool. This is what the first slice looks like. It'll keep changing as we go. I'm right-handed, so it'll be a little hard to show you. There's that beautiful star. So that's where the seeds go inside. And the first ones, we could almost see, these are parts of the flower that used to be attached to the apple. Before it was an apple, it was a flower. And then some bees pollinated it and it became a fruit. There are seeds inside. We haven't gotten to the seeds yet. When we get to them, we're gonna take them out because we don't wanna eat those seeds, but we could try planting them. That might be cool, just like Johnny Appleseed, huh? I'm gonna go ahead and keep cutting these up and I will meet you back as soon as I have both of my apples sliced nice and thin like that. Alrighty, here are all my apple slices. Some of them got a little bit funny shaped because I was trying to keep them pretty thin. So this one isn't quite a whole circle, but that's okay. 
I thought this one was kind of interesting as I did the very last slice. It sort of made a C shape. That was kind of cool. Woo! Um, I want to go ahead and pull all the pieces of seeds out, but I think it's really interesting that they create this kind of star shape. So kids, something you can definitely help with is getting the seeds out of the slices because you do not need a knife for that part. Look at all those seeds. Now, I did slice through some of the seeds, which is okay because I still have plenty that I could use if I wanted to try to plant them. Remember, one tree only needs one seed. So I have quite a few trees that are here, soon to be trees. Um, the tiny bit of the stem stayed in this one, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that out too. Overall, I think they look pretty good. Let's count our seeds. I'm gonna count the ones that are still whole. One, two, three, four, five, six, oops, seven, eight. Eight whole seeds. Oh, yeah, I'll count that as whole. And then let's count how many are just parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, they're kind of sticky, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and two stem pieces. So we had eight whole seeds and 13 part seeds and two stem pieces. Oh, 14 part seeds. Did we have more whole seeds or part seeds? I think we definitely had more parts. There are 14 here and only eight over here. And I used the strategy move and count as I moved those to their piles to count them. The next step on our, on our recipe says, so we preheated the oven to 225, check. Did we wash and dry the apples? Check. Did we slice them as thin as we can? Check. Now we need to place the apples on a baking sheet in a single layer and not touching. So I need to go get a baking sheet and we'll be ready to do that. I'm also gonna go ahead and take my opportunity to move these seeds and this cutting board and this big sharp knife out of the way. All the rest of the stuff, except for putting it in the oven, a kid can do. So you don't need any sharp tools. You don't need anything hot until we open the oven. We won't do that yet. So kids, this next part is all for you. Alrighty, for the next part, I need a baking sheet and I have one here. And I'm gonna go ahead and place my apple chips on it. Look how beautiful those are with the star in the center. So I'm gonna put them all on the baking sheet, but I don't want them to touch because they might get stuck together. I'm gonna pick all my prettiest ones for this first batch. And for the second batch, maybe I will pick the other ones that have like holes in the middle or, I don't know, the ones that aren't as beautiful. Maybe I can pick another big one here. Let's see, oh, there's a nice big one, oops. I have a little space around the edges, so I think I will add some of these smaller ones on there. Ooh, let's check out what this letter C ends up looking like. It's okay if they touch just a little bit as long as they're not on top of each other. I think that looks pretty good. We need to put some cinnamon on. So I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle them with just a little cinnamon. I don't wanna dump the whole container on them. And I wanna get it mostly on the apples and not so much on the pan. So I don't wanna waste it. The pan does not need cinnamon. So I'm just putting a little bit on each. Let's see. Not too much. Mm -hmm. Get a little extra on this one. It's a nice big one. There's my letter C. Alrighty, that looks pretty good to me. Maybe a little more on this one. Now, like I said, if you wanted to put nutmeg or pumpkin pie spice or even some lemon juice on them, you could. I'm choosing not to today, um, just because I think the idea of just plain cinnamon sounds delicious. And that's what I have at home. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the oven for one hour, according to our recipe. And I will set a timer for one hour. And when the timer goes off, we will meet back up and uh, go ahead and flip them over. Here it goes. Of course, if you have more than one baking sheet, you are welcome to do two at a time, one on the top and one on the bottom of the oven or next to each other. Um, I think I'm gonna do one at a time. Here it goes. All right, now it's time to clean up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my cutting board away, wipe off my counter, put my spices back and do all that stuff. And kids, you're in charge of the cleanup process here. There's only one job that you can't do. You're not in charge of cleaning the knife. But other than that, you can wipe off the cutting board, you can put the spices away, you can make sure the counter is clear. That's your job. This is your recipe and it's your cleanup too. Make sure your one hour timer is set and we will see each other in one hour. Well, it'll be a lot faster on video to check how our apple slices are looking. See you then. Alrighty, they're looking pretty yummy. I'm gonna go ahead and turn them over using some tongs because they are hot. And then I'll sprinkle some cinnamon on the back. And they're ready to go back in the oven. Now remember that they're hot, so you will need a tool. The super thin ones will bake faster, so those might only need one more hour, but the ones that are a little bit thicker might need a little extra time. So we'll check in an hour, and maybe we'll need to take some out if they're done and leave the rest on the baking sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick these up and put them back in the oven. Alrighty, kindergarten, here's the final product. I ended up putting the last ones in the oven for another half hour after we had already done two hours, but they are done and I'm going to let them cool on the counter until they're all the way crispy and then I'll put them in a container. So while they're still warm, I don't want to put them in a container because they'll create steam on the inside of the container and then they'll get soggy. So I will leave them out on the counter for maybe half an hour or an hour until they're nice and crispy. And then I can go ahead and put them in a container and store them for another day, or I can go ahead and eat them all today. I think they turned out pretty good looking and I already tasted one and they are pretty delicious. I hope you get the opportunity to make some of these too. They're very simple and very tasty.